Hi, this is Jeannie Buss of the Los Angeles Lakers, and this is the Dennis Murphy Story. Before the American Basketball Association was born in 1967, the NBA monopolized professional basketball. That's why the sport was vastly different then than what people see today. The NBA did not have slam dunks, fast breaks, three-point shots, or even cheerleaders. Players had to finish college or turn 21 years of age before joining the pro ranks, and salaries were dismal. Dennis Murphy decided to challenge the NBA by creating the American Basketball Association. Dennis Murphy is an entrepreneur, but he's also a hustler, which I think you have to kind of be in order to be someone who's creating and selling things that don't exist. And, you know, Dennis, <laughs> you know, bless his heart, he really could sell ice to Eskimos. He never took no for an answer. So in late 1967, roughly 150 eager and determined players and coaches finally started off Dennis Murphy's brand new ABA league. It was then up to the fans to determine their fate. Once the ABA league stabilized and matured, the founder Dennis Murphy saw his role diminish in league affairs. Dennis was a promoter, and promoter has sort of a negative connotation to it. It's a, there's a little flim-flam involved. And as the league developed stability, the promoters got isolated. And in the final analysis, Dennis, for having put the league together as the founder and, quote, promoter, ended up overall being isolated and, for lack of better language, cut out from the eventual success of the league. However, Dennis stayed involved in the ABA by becoming vice president of the Miami Floridians. Dennis observed that cheerleaders at the college level and pro basketball games of that era were fully dressed with heavy sweaters and pom-poms. This gave the ABA founder another visionary idea, this time to help his Miami team. We were trying to figure out how to get more people in the stand. So we were lucky in Florida to have two twins who had very, very nice decorum. They were very pretty girls. And we asked them to be our bikini girls and they've decided that they would. We had an ulterior motive, and that was to get people in the stands to watch the girls. And second, get people in the stands to watch the players watch the girls. So that's, and that way we kind of got an edge on winning and losing. There's so many things I love about Dennis Murphy and the fact that Dennis Murphy was the first one to incorporate girls dancing, athletic women being part of a professional basketball game as the, the guys are taking a break, the girls take the floor and you know, it's showtime. Being involved with kind of wheeler dealer like Dennis Murphy helped prepare me for my current position as executive vice president of the Lakers because I learned about promotion and marketing and he was a teacher and, and, and great at supporting you. And that's exactly what the Laker girls brought to the NBA and now every team has a dance squad. You know, I have a feeling that t even today, if Dennis Murphy walked in to my dad and said, Jerry, I got a great idea. My dad would sit down, listen to it, and then turn it over to me to, to operate and execute. <laughs> so I guess we're just waiting for the next big thing.